Shalom and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Guitar Rabbi YouTube channel. And after many months of you guys waiting, here it is. See, the green screen's got a little bit of an effect on the uh, pickups there. My apologies for that, as well as the binding. All that good stuff. I mean, look at that. Oh, hitting the microphone. All that good stuff. Now, just so you guys know, this is not a real Gibson Les Paul. This is actually a Chipson. Now, when I first started playing guitar, my dad was always talking about Gibson guitars, how Gibson guitars were the best guitars that were out there. Now, this is before they've had their issues the past couple of years. You know, going and throwing out lawsuits to all these other companies and all that stuff before the quality control issues in the 90s, most notably 1996, Les Paul was the stuff. Um, companies like PRS really hadn't emerged at that point. Now, I'm not saying the PRS is better than Gibson. They're different. That's the thing. You know, many people say, what is the best guitar out there? There is no best guitar. There's a best guitar for you. Um, but it's not going to be the best guitar for somebody else. Now, when I decided to start playing again back in December, after a 15-year hiatus, there were two guitars that I wanted. One was the EVH Wolfgang because I wanted one of those Ever since I was 15 years old, always wanted that guitar. I hadn't looked at guitars for many years, and I saw that, whoa, I can get them for $700 now, as opposed to the $4,000 that they were in the 90s, back when PV and Music Man had made the Wolfgang. And the second was a slash Appetite for Destruction Les Paul. I decided to look up the prices of that, seeing if they might have been somewhere in my price range. $4,000, I don't think so. But I found out about this Chipson market. Now, I've heard people going back and forth on Chipson models. Some absolutely love them, some absolutely hate them. And I think that a lot of the times we have an internal bias. A lot of the times the reviews that you see can be because of the fact when they're overly negative can be because of the fact that you have many Gibson loyalists out there. And that is, is understandable. I find that a lot with Gibson guitars. I also find that a lot with PRS guitars where there's kind of, I don't know, there's kind of this weird cult thing going on. And I have both now. Well, one's a fake, this one. <laughs> Um, but I have a real PRS and I don't like hanging out with PRS people <laughs> because of that, uh, that superiority complex that's out there. And so what happened was I said for, well, for 280 bucks, I can get a copy of this made, um, and shipped to me. So I did that back in December at the same time that I had ordered my EVH. And I knew enough to know that they are two totally different sounding guitars. 
And so when I ordered my EVH or ordered this one, I ordered it from DH gate. And by the time like early February rolled around, I was like, how come this thing hasn't shipped? And I was given a, a tracking number that wasn't a real tracking number. And I was told by the seller that it got seized in customs and they gave me a refund. Okay. Either they didn't really send it or it got seized by customs. It's one of the two. I don't know. I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I go and I order it from somebody else after I had gotten my refund on eBay. This one, I can confirm, was seized at customs. And the day that I got the letter saying that it was seized in customs, Amy and I were going to Nashville um, for the conference that she wanted to go to. And so we decided to also go to the, um, to the Gibson garage. So we go down to the Gibson garage and I was really put out by just how non-helpful the individuals were over there, especially when I was asked, actually looking at the Epiphone version of this, because I was tired of waiting for this guitar and it never showing up. So I decided to ask about the Epiphone. They really didn't want to help me at all. They um, didn't want to tell uh, tell me that it was uh, basically not being made anymore and all that stuff. So that kind of put me off to Gibson a little bit. And so I ended up finding one on, on Zounds. Now, I love ordering from Zounds, but one of the issues that I always have with Zounds is that if something's out of stock, you don't find out until a week later that it's out of stock. And there's this whole thing where we're going to refund you back after a week and a half, and then we're going to deduct the money again when it's back in stock. It's just, just put on your website that it's out of stock. Just do that. And so finally they refunded me and I found a gentleman that had this in Virginia and uh, was selling it and I jumped at it. He asked a hundred dollar premium, but I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I will pay a hundred dollars extra. And it ended up showing up Friday right over here. One of the first things I did in Amy and I shop is only about a block away from my apartment. And the thing is that I was so worried about the headstock. And yes, there is a little chip in the headstock. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But there's a little chip. There we go. There's a little chip in the headstock. And I'm not too worried about that. I'm saying that gives it character. <laughs> in my personal opinion. And um, I was worried that the headstock would have been split or something like that, and I just needed to know. Otherwise, I wasn't stressed out all day. So I ran home, took it out of the box, laid it down, and I was like, ooh, this thing's nice and bulky. I was afraid of it being, you know, really kind of like the Epiphone um, weight and all that stuff because the Epiphones are very light guitars and all that. Um but uh, it was nice and he and heavy. This is probably the heaviest guitar that I have. And I looked at the um, at the setup of it. Set up really good. The um, the neck pickup it's a little bit sunken in, but these pickups are going to be switched out anyway. I'm going to put some uh, slash Alnico two Seymour Duncan's within this. Um. And, you know, there's there's some minor things that, you know, will jump out to you that it's a fake. For instance, the binding, uh, the way that it goes and meets, the neck meets the body. You see there's a little bit of discoloration there and all that stuff. Um, there are things that do jump out and say, oh, this is not a, an actual one, as well as the, the first volume switch, the first uh, top hat volume switch right there. Um, it is raised up a little bit higher than the other ones. But other than all that, I, and I put brand new strings on this as soon as it came in, put brand new strings on it. 
this thing hasn't gone out of tune yet. That's one of the things that I was worried about, you know, especially with these tuners that are on there and plus the nut that's already on there. I was afraid this thing was going to be out of tune every couple of seconds like my PRS used to be before I ended up fixing the, the frets on it. And I got to say, all the things I was worried about with this, I'm no longer worried about. This is actually a great guitar for $280. A great guitar. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to go put uh, Seymour Duncan's in it. At some point, I may switch out the electronics and all that stuff. Because I do notice a little bit of buzzing and all that stuff at times. Not a horrible amount. But, you know, it's something that could be a lot better. But um, I got to say, I absolutely love this guitar. Though, I, you know, if you are the person who focuses mainly on aesthetics, you may be looking at the binding and being like, oh, I'm not too sure about, oh, look at where that's discolored right there. Oh, that's not the actual color that it's, you know. Those things don't matter to me. I, I, I don't get these guitars to display on my wall. You know, as some sort of work of art or something like that. I like to play them. As a matter of fact, let's go and play it right now. Very nice sounding guitar. Very nice sounding guitar. Um, again, you know, and the quality is only going to go up once we put the Seymour Duncans in here. And I plan to do that on my birthday, as a matter of fact, in September. Um, there's a local luthier here in the area. And I'm excited about doing this. I'm excited about uh, switching these things out and all that. But, um, yeah. I got to be honest. <sighs> I'm more impressed with this than I thought I would be. I like the weight. I like the fretboard. The fretboard could be a little bit smoother, however. I, that I do uh, find to be the case because, for instance, at certain times, I don't have the sustain that it is that I need. For instance, like right here. Oops. See? Sometimes the sustain's not there, and um, I guarantee you that when the um, pickups are switched out, that will change. All right? Thank you for joining me here today. Shalom, bracha, peace, and a blessing. Shalom.